Hello and welcome to episode two of Inside PTI. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jason Webster. Hey, today I thought we'd spend a little bit of time talking about high managed soybeans. Otherwise, in other words, how do we grow high yielding soybeans? And at the PTI farm, we've we're trying to create an arsenal, I guess, if you will, a, a you know a toolbox where we're putting in as many tools as possible to try to grow high yielding soybeans. And this year, I tell you, it was it was it was such an experience out in the field. We learned a, a great deal from the management program that we instilled in some of our soybeans. And the, the slide you see on the screen is you see some pictures of some pods that are on some soybean plants from the PTI farm in our high management studies. And I kind of want to zoom in a little bit of these pods so you can really see what's happening. This year, I've never seen the amount of four bean pods that I ever have in a given soybean field nor a given soybean trial. And it really started to make me wonder a little bit about what are we doing with these soybeans? Why are we getting these soybeans to respond to us? And I'll ask you guys, as soybean growers, how many four bean pods are you supposed to have on a soybean plant? Or, or let me rephrase the question, how many do you currently have on the soybeans that you grow typically in your field each and every year? And normally you don't see many of these. And this year, this past year in 2021, these pods were everywhere. It was very easy to see these on a plant. Uh, it was very common for us to find 10 to 12 of these four bean pods per plant in many cases. And it was quite interesting to watch. Now, this is the protocol that we use for our 2021 high managed soybeans. And I guess I'll kind of go through these um, one by one, or at least segment by segment. And, and at, the, at the top left of the screen, you'll see the start of our at plant nutrition programs. Now, the only thing on here I should mention, the only thing not on this recipe card is our fall fertilizer that we put in strip till. We are strip tilling in the fall and we do put dap and potash in the bottom of the strips. Then we come in with the planter in the spring. And again, now go to the top left hand side of the screen and you'll see our at plant nutrition's beginning. I've got one tank and pump on my planter that I can direct fertilizer product in FurrowJet Center. This is going to be on the seed and in between the seed. And this is where we came in last year with a gallon per acre of a carbon-based sugar from QLF called Boost. We're using Stolar USA's BioForge Advance along with Charge. Charge is a humic acid. That's what's going in furrow. Then we transition, we relay off to the side in furrow jet wings, and we're putting a gallon and a half per acre of Nature's Triple Option and also a gallon and a half of Nature's Balance. Okay, and you'll hear me say balance again here in just a little bit. But with those two products, we added just a little bit of water for increased surface area. And then we relayed again, third tank and pump on the planter now with Conceal. Now we're going in the gauge wheels of the planter, directing five gallon per acre of 32% UAN, three gallon of Nature's KFU. So here I am adding potassium, okay, to our soybeans, 10 gallon of Nature's Throwback, 32 ounces of Nature's Humimex, Humiflex Max, excuse me, and two quart of Nature's Sideswipe. And so you'll see kind of a, you know, a lot of tools here through Conceal, some high horsepower with some of these products that we're putting on. That's what we used on the planter. The beans come up and they look beautiful. We had people coming into the PTI farm, farmers driving their pickup trucks into the farm saying, hey, what did you do to those soybeans? Because they look pretty good. Well, that's what I did to the soybeans right there. That, that fall fertilizer, just a little bit of dap and potash, and then we come in with these at plant new treatments, these at plant treatments. And, and I'll admit, the beans looked fabulous. We got them off to a really good start. We get to herbicide time. We need to spray some weeds. We get to the fifth trifoliate growth stage. We're gonna, we come in with our Liberty herbicide and we add finish line and triple option from Nature's as a foliar application, the first foliar application we make. We get a little further along in the growing season and all of a sudden we go from vegetative stage into reproductive stage. Now we've got flowers on the soybeans and we attack again. We come in with a gallon per acre of nature's K-Flex, okay, more potassium, three quart per acre of nature's impulse, and finally a pint per acre of finish line, that same product we put on with our herbicide at fifth trifoliate. We had a, a spray UAV on the farm, and so we had the, the, you know, the ability to spray in multiple or sequential applications. And I said, I know we're still at R1. I know we already made an application with some potassium. Um, 
let's do it again and let's introduce the first fungicide. So again, we've got flowers. And one of the things I'm thinking about at flowering time is how do we, how do we keep more flowers? Because I do think that we abort in some cases, maybe up to 50% of the flowers that we create on a, on a soybean, we just can't keep them, they abort. And so I said, all right, let's bring in our first fungicide. We brought in Miravis Neo, and I also added Boron and Molly, Molybdenum. And I thought that was a really good time with that R1 again, trying to encourage the plant to keep more flowers. We get a little further in the growing season, we get to R3, that first growth stage where the soybean plant has both flowers and pods, and we protect it again with another fungicide, this time with BASF's Revitech. We also added Balance in one more time. That's that same product I mentioned earlier that was soil engaging in our furrow jet wings. Last week, two quart of nature's K fuel, so just a little bit more potassium once again to these soybeans. Last week at R5, we, we call this our finish application to get us through that, that R5. All those flowers we were encouraging to try to keep, now we're trying to fill all those pods. Came in with another fungicide application, Miravis Neo. More balance again, I brought in that balance again. It's, a, it's got tons of micronutrients in this product. Again, just to try to maintain. We built that big foundation with the planter, with the plant nutrients, and now we're trying to maintain as much as we can. And lastly, two quart of, of nature's K-Fuel, more potassium. You kind of see a general trend here of uh, the amount of potassium it takes to grow high yielding soybeans. So that was our protocol, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's what we did, but I'll tell you, the amount of four bean pods we saw this year were quite tremendous and it offered us some high yield you can see we had a golden harvest 31.92 soybean out here in, in the high management trial and it went 110.4 bushel to the acre so we were we were able to get this thing to respond but here's the thing i want to point out if you look in the lower left side of this graph you'll see my control this is just dap and potash in strip till. In the bottom of a strip, I've got dap and potash to feed these soybean plants. It's a one and done application. Here you go the rest of the year. And I never broke 100 bushel with it. Never broke 100 bushel to the acre. How did I get 100 bushel to the acre? We reallocated some of our dry fertilizer in the fall. We reduced some of those rates to allow us to come in on the planter to be able to afford some of these nutritional programs on the planter. We come in with FurrowJet center applications that we talked about earlier, and that allowed us to bust that 100 bushel barrier. Now we're at, we're at 102.8 bushel beans. We look at some products in furrow jet wing, we get just a touch more of yield at 103.6. I will say this, of all the nutritional placements, liquid nutritional placements, Concealed did give me the highest individual contribution to yield, coming in at 108.3 bushel. But it wasn't the highest yield in the study. The highest yield in the study came from doing everything. Yes, dry fertilizer in the fall in the bottom of our strip, but then implementing the five point touch, the liquid programs, FurrowJet Center, FurrowJet Wings, and Conceal. Using the whole program as a relay program. Yes, I've got three tanks and pumps on the planter to do this. And some argue with me saying, Jason, that's way too much. I can't handle that on a planter. But if we can direct some of these really nice fertilizers that we have access to and putting them in the right spot to feed these soybeans, we can get some nice response from our soybeans in regard to yield. Here's that five point liquid touch. Look at the, the orange lines. They're, they're gonna be my in furrow applications. Some of this fertilizer can't go next to the seed. That's okay, I'll just put it off to the side and furrow jet wing. Some of, of, of the fertilizers, maybe it's a sugar, maybe it's a biological, that's where we can put close to the seed to give that seed a great early start. And then the blue lines on the outside, that's my conceal. That, that's gonna be the products that could potentially be higher salt value that I really can't have near soybeans at all. But these are far enough away to get the job done. But once that plant comes up out of the ground, establish that root system, after we take advantage of the in furrow fertilizer, then we're gonna kick into overdrive when those roots get access to our conceal band of nutrition. Look at the individual yield response. You know, we go from our status quo dry fertilizer program at 96.8. We get a six bushel increase when we go to furrow jet center and it just keeps on going higher. Again, with doing everything, giving us the highest yield response at 13.6 extra bushel to the acre. Did it make me any money? I guess that's the thing we always ask ourselves in a high yield situation with all the extra trips in the field, with all the extra inputs that we're putting on. Did it make me any money? And that's a legitimate question. It did. Matter of fact, our furrow jet wing applications were our highest in ROI at $97 to the acre. 
Uh, and if you remember right, there was just two products in Ferro Jail Wing, pretty simple, easy program with some really nice responses. But you can see all the applications were profitable compared to just a standard status quo dry fertilizer program. I, I mentioned earlier, we are irrigating our soybeans. We're using Netafim drip tape and working with the folks at NutriDrip for the design and installation. And we've learned a lot from this. We've, we've relied heavily on these folks to help us through this process to figure out how can we water, how can we irrigate soybeans, and maybe more importantly in some, some cases, how do, we, how do we fertigate, how do we supply fertilizer through our drip tape to continue spoon feeding our soybeans. And, and the thing I like about the, the, the slide you're seeing on the screen right now is look at the root activity, look at the, the architecture of this root mass of the soybean plant. A lot of folks think that soybeans are a taproot, and I do think in general they are. But this slide just goes to show you, if you put food, if you put water, nutrition, at the mouth of a soybean plant, we get this explosion of root activity in this big fibrous root system. That's what's going to allow us to get, to get to more nutrition and keep that plant happy. And it's all about keeping more flowers and driving more, more pods and more beans. Look at the irrigation slash fertigation response I've received on beans. I've only been able to do this the last three years since we've installed our irrigation program. But look at this, not a single year has gone by where we haven't picked up soybean yields of less than 23 bushel to the acre. It has been tremendous in our high yield program. So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is how do we get higher yielding soybeans? Well, I would say it's not easy, but we need to get more nodes on each individual plant. Encourage branching. I'll count those nodes on those branches. That'll be great. Okay, that'll lead to more, more pods, more beans. Let's keep more flowers during the, the growing season. Once we get to reproductive stages, we lose too many flowers. We talked about that today. Let's keep the soybean plant healthy to encourage it to keep more of those flowers. Let's set an early nutrition program to do that. You know, a lot of times we think of corn, keeping corn happy up until V5 when it sets girth of that ear. Well, I don't think it's much different with soybeans. I think we need to set that early foundation to keep that plant healthy, to drive through our one growth stage to keep as many flowers as possible. I wanna offer as many banded forms of fertilizer placements. Now, yes, I want my dry fertilizer in the fall, but I want this five point touch, multiple forms of, of fertilizer in different spots to continue to drive yield. And lastly, you know, it's, it's maintaining feeding after emergence and critical crop stages. You know, R1, R3, those are very critical times. But what about R5, that finish program? You know, to encourage seed size, encourage, you know, keeping that plant healthy. Okay, late season diseases, let's not forget about that. Let's, let's have a program that addresses that late season finish to get us up to that finish line. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, you can do one of two things. One, you can reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer. They would love to talk to you about this. Or two, you can email us at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. Your emails will come directly to our PTI farm team, and we'd love to answer any questions that you may have. Hey, thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. Look forward to bringing more episodes to you real, real soon. Thanks again for watching.